come. I felt 80% better. Um, I'd even put it on Facebook. I was looking forward to inviting people to come on Wednesday night. And uh, Wednesday afternoon, I, I had a phone call to deal with um, the, our audiovisual guy. And 10 minutes into the phone call, I'd lost my voice. And so I thought, well, how's that going to work? And so thankfully, Jeff was uh, more than willing to step in. And uh, Jeff, I appreciate the good job that you did. Your willingness on a short notice to be here last week. A couple of weeks ago, we started talking about the whole exchange of Adam and the garden, and we touched on some of it Sunday morning about you know who told you. Today, as I was preparing for this, God brought to my mind a story that that fits here. Um. Back in March of 2007, a uh, charter bus arrived at uh, Bluffton University here in Bluffton, Ohio, and picked up the uh, baseball team. And they were going down to Sarasota, Florida to play in a tournament. And um, they had decided to do the trip in one 18-hour nonstop trip. And so the first driver took off from Bluffton University, and he drove and got to just north of Atlanta, Georgia, a little town called Adairsville, Georgia, and got off the interstate, and they swapped out drivers, and another driver got on the bus, and he was going to finish by taking it to Sarasota, Florida, which is about another nine hours from there. Somewhere in the downtown part of Atlanta, and for years, we lived in Cleveland, Tennessee, which is just 20 miles north of Georgia. Um, and while we lived there, I drove a tour bus, or I drove commercial vehicles, and then I drove tour buses. Uh, but in Atlanta, Georgia, on Interstate 75 South, <clears throat> they have an HOV lane. And it's a little tricky, because the HOV lane was added years later. Um, and so to accommodate it, there's more than one place. The HOV lane is the far left lane. There's more than one place where the HOV lane leaves Interstate 75 because 75 goes under a number of bridges and there just isn't enough space. And so the HOV lane will leave Interstate 75 and it will go up over the cross streets and then back down and rejoin Interstate 75. It does that at least twice going down through there. If you've never done it before, <clears throat> it can catch you by surprise. Well, this driver was not familiar with that route, and he was traveling at just north of 60 miles an hour through downtown Atlanta at 5.57 in the morning. And he got off on what he thought was the HOV lane, once again doing a hop over a couple of streets and dropping back down and rejoining the interstate. But he was mistaken. He had totally misread the signs. And in fact, when the investigation was done, the, 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 the blame for the crash was not put on the driver, but on the Georgia Department of Highway, Highway Department for poorly signing this exit ramp. But he exited this ramp thinking it was just a continuation of the HOV ramp doing a little over 60 miles an hour, and when he got to the top of the ramp, it's a dead end. You have to turn left or right. You're, it's a regular exit ramp. Well, he attempted to make the turn to try to continue on the bridge, but going that fast and, and the bus, the bus actually hit the guardrail, flipped over the guardrail, and fell 20 feet and landed on its roof and killed seven of the baseball team and the driver himself. He just misunderstood. He got confused. And in life, we can get confused if we start misunderstanding the voices that we hear. When we read our verses on Sunday at out of John chapter 10, Jesus talked about, my sheep will know my voice. 
you, you got to understand that when he's saying that, he fully recognizes there will be other voices. Let's just be honest for a moment. How many have other voices in your head? Uh, there was a t-shirt I wanted to buy, but Gilbert said I wasn't allowed to. <laughs> it said, I just do what the voices in my head tell me to do. I'm just kidding. I, I threatened I would wear it. I could tell by the look on her face she wasn't thrilled with the idea. And, and that was better judgment. But we read that the, the scenario, and I'm not going to take the time to read it again tonight. It's found in Genesis chapter 2, where Eve is spending time doing something, and the serpent begins to talk to her. And um, you have to throw out the image you have in the past about when and how that took place to really grasp what really did take place. Because the Bible says that the serpent was the serpent of the field. It wasn't the serpent in the garden. The serpent wasn't in the garden. That's crucial to know that. We get into trouble when we get out of where God put us. And the serpent is out in the field, and he says something to Eve. He deceives her. He gets her to thinking about things that he just, she just shouldn't have been thinking about. Later, the Bible says that she's in the garden, and her husband is with her, and she sees the tree that her and the serpent talked about some time earlier. And she sees that it's good to eat, and it's attractive. And so the Bible says that she takes the fruit, and she eats it. And she gives it to her husband with her, and he eats it. And when they eat it, they become aware that they're naked, and now they're, they're ashamed. And they cover themselves. They hear God coming, walking in the garden. So they hide themselves, and God says that calls out to Adam, where are you? Adam says, we, we're, we're hiding because we're naked. God's response was, who, who told you that? I want you to, I want you to, I want you to get the, the, the weight of that moment. God doesn't say to Adam, what did you do? He asks him, who told you? Because God understands that we can have the most sincere heart, but if we listen to the wrong voice, we can end up in a bad place. I talked about that, that bus driver. He, he had 17 years of experience. He had a flawless record. He was a good driver by every intent. He was rested. He had gone down two days ahead of time. Stayed at a hotel so that he was DOT legal. He got up that morning when the bus pulled into the parking lot of the motel. He was fresh and ready to go. Competent, capable driver, but got confused. It's possible in life to be sincere, but be sincerely wrong. And so... God, Adam answers God by saying that that woman that you gave me gave me the fruit and I ate of it. And God turns to Eve and said, what did you do? And she says, the serpent. How many grew up with brothers and sisters? Then you know this game, don't you? I didn't do it, he did it. Matt said, no, no, I didn't do it. Shane did it. <laughs> That's how this game works. I want you to notice something. God begins to curse. Curse is a, a bad word. He begins to explain to them why things are going to be hard for them now. And he says to the serpent, it's going to be hard for you now 
because you listen to yourself. He says to Eve, Eve, it's going to be hard for you now because you listen to the serpent. He says to Adam, Adam, it's going to be hard for you now because you listen to Eve. Go and read it. Don't look at me like that. Just go and read it. You know what? If we back up for a moment, you know what he's saying? If you listen to that voice, it doesn't matter whether that voice is yours. That voice is one of a stranger. Or that voice is one of a loved one. The fact that it's not God's voice is the problem. You can't find your way to heaven by yourself. I've known some good, sincere people who got good and sincerely wrong. And because the measuring stick that they measure is their own inner voice, they have deceived themselves. And I've shared with you in the past, the person most difficult to help is one who's deceived themselves. Because when you explain to them why what they're doing is going to be problematic, the measuring stick is themselves, and they always measure and say, no, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I know what I'm talking about. That, there is no such thing as lone rangers in the kingdom of God. That's why we're supposed to be part of a body. Come on. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as a matter of some is, even more so as you see that day approaching. Assembling, it's just not go to church. It means developing connections. It, it means having people in your life who can look you in the eye and tell you the truth. Who can encourage you when you're right and love you enough to say, but you need to check yourself. Come on. And every one of us need those kind of people in our lives. If you're not willing to tell person the truth and check them, don't kid yourself. You don't love them. You maybe love the relationship. You maybe love how the things you, joined, you enjoy doing together. But if you really love somebody, you'll tell them the truth. Come on, people. It's good stuff. You'll tell them the truth. In love, you'll tell them the truth. Not to pick them apart, but you'll tell them the truth. You'll love them enough. How many know that God loves us? How many knows that he always tells us the truth? He so tells us the truth, he is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He told the Pharisees and Sadducees that you don't know me because you don't like the truth. Secondly, you've got to be careful. We, we'll take, I've known people that take advice from a stranger. Listen, I'm, 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 I'm a believer in, 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 in prophecy. I'm a believer in personal prophecy. I'm a, I'm a believer that God can show somebody you don't know something about you and they can speak that into your life. Okay? That, that needs to be exercised and encouraged in the body. But we've got to be careful. Amen? Amen? I've seen it be misused and abused. And it's, it's okay. It's okay if, if you're someplace and you engage in strangers. I, I've given words of prophecy to strangers. That's, that's sometimes easier to do than people you know. Because sometimes you don't know if it's you or God. I mean, know what I'm talking about. I was at a conference years ago, and, and there was this couple. And, oh, my gosh, God, I, I felt like God gave me a word for them, but they were just not the approachable type anyhow. And 
I don't, I don't know them, you know. I was finding every reason in the book not to give this to them, you know. And I, you know, I gave God hurdles. Well, this and well that. And I'm just being honest with you. I shouldn't have, but that's what I did. So finally, I, I, I told God, okay, okay, if, if, if I see them again, you know, I, I'll, I'll do it. And I didn't see them anywhere. And so I thought I was, okay, I get out of doing this, you know. And lo and behold, I'm standing someplace, and I, at the end of the escalator, and I'm looking for somebody, and I'm looking around, I turn to look, and here they come. Literally, they're going to stop right in my face when they step off the escalator. And so I said, hi, you guys. And they said, hi, and they began to walk. And I said, can I talk to you a second? Let's step over here. And I said, listen, earlier today, you were in this conference room for, for this session, and God spoke something to my heart, and, um, and I just wanted to share this with you. And I shared it with them. And as I'm sharing with them, they both start crying. They had been at a place of decision in their life, and they came to this conference sure that God was going to show them. And they're literally leaving the building. They weren't staying for that night service. They were leaving to go home, and they had said to each other 15 minutes earlier, what are we going to do? We thought we were going to get a word. We thought we were going to get a direction. We thought, you know, we felt like that's what God said to us, and we're leaving. We didn't get it. And everything that I said clearly made the decision. How many know what I'm saying? And, and, but, but, but here's the thing. When, 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 when you get a voice from some stranger about your life, I'm a believer that it ought to be confirmation and not information. If you haven't the slightest desire in your body, it's never really crossed your mind. You have no will, no want, no nothing to go to Africa to speak to the native people, you're probably not going to be called by some stranger to go to Africa to speak to the native people. All right? There's already going to be a stirring. God's already going to start to do something in you. There'll be a desire. You'll have a sense. There'll be a a drawing, you'll watch a video, you'll be at a service, you, you'll hear, read your Bible, something somewhere, and then he'll confirm it through a stranger. Are you with me so far? Yes. This is just good stuff, folks. We're talking about listening to the right voice. But you also got to be careful not to just listen to a voice because it's somebody you care deeply about. doesn't matter if it's a spouse or a pastor or a bishop, or whoever, a world evangelist. Doesn't matter who it is. You've got to be careful the voice you listen to. It should line up with what God is already saying to you. It should line up. It should be a confirmation. How many with me so far? Yes. And you've and, and you got to be careful the voices. So number one, I challenge you, take this into consideration. You may be listening to the wrong voice. You just may be listening to the wrong voice. And if you're not careful and if you walk in pride and you think you got this and you've been doing this long enough, you've got it perfected, you're in trouble. God warned me years ago, so I wrote a note, and I put it in the, the right-hand top desk of my, my office, so every time, because that's the desk drawer I got in the most, so I would open it, and I would see the note often, and it simply said, be careful, you may be wrong. And you and I need to walk with that truth. We've got to be careful. You've got to be careful that you're, that, 
you're not following your voice. Because I want to tell you, the easiest voice to follow is your own. There is a way which seems right unto a man. It just seems like the right thing to do. It just seems that way. And if we're not careful, we'll not serve the God of the universe. We'll serve the God of our own making in our own head. And he always wants what we want. <laughs> if your God always wants what you want, I'm going to tell you that's not God. He probably will upset your apple cart more than he'll push it. Am I telling the truth? If that voice that you follow all the time tells you what you want to hear all the time, man, you're in danger because you're probably following your own voice. You can't depend on your pastor to be right all the time. Pastors are going to get it wrong. Even well-meaning preachers are going to get it wrong. I nearly got blown out of the saddle as a, as a, a many, many, many years ago. I'm going to leave the name out. It's irrelevant. There's probably nobody in here that hasn't heard this man's name before. He's world, world known. I was going through a bad, bad time in my life. I, was, I had stepped out of ministry after being in ministry for 15 years. I was questioning God's call on my life. I was really going through a really, really difficult time. I mean, it was as ugly as it gets. I wasn't in sin. I just didn't have a direction. I was like a, a ship without a rudder. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I just didn't know. And I, this, this, I always kind of admired this guy and his ministry, and he was coming to a place near us. It was about an hour or so away, and so we drove to go to the service, and there was four or 5,000 people there. And um, at one point in time, he quote-unquote had a word of knowledge. He was right in the middle of his message. He said, there um, there are some people here, there are some people in ministry that you have stepped out of ministry and you're questioning your call. And you, you, you feel like a ship without a rudder. And I'm thinking, I've said that to myself. Okay? And you, and I want you to come on up on this platform. I'm going to pray for you. So there was four or five of us out of 5,000 who went up there. I'm not going to lie to you. It's kind of embarrassing to go up there and admit to everybody, I don't even know if I'm called to preach. I don't know if I'm called to pastor. And he prayed for everybody else, and he looks at me and he says, if God ever told you to never preach again, would you obey him? Well, that seemed like a weird question. Because the Bible says that the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. And so I answered him and I said, I will do whatever God tells me to do. But he would never tell me not to preach. He said, if God told you to never preach again, would you obey him? I'm standing up there, just me and him in front of 5,000 people. And, you know, whether it's 5,000 people or, or us tonight, I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to say God called me so he would never tell me not to preach. Being in live broadcast around the world and in front of all these people, he says, just get out of here. You don't even know God. Just get off my platform. You don't even know God. Just go away. That was a long walk back to my seat. I later learned that it doesn't matter how good a person you may be, you can still be wrong occasionally. I think he was wrong. I wasn't trying to be difficult with him. I wasn't trying to be a smart aleck. It just didn't jive with the voice that I read in the Bible. If you're called, you're called for life. Amen? That's how I read it. Listen, I hope you feel like you're hearing the good word when you come here to get taught or preached. 
But you need to have a word beyond that. You can't listen to your own voice. You can't listen to the voice of strangers. I know people who listen to strangers' voices before they listen to anybody else. Don't be so quick to listen to the voice of a stranger. Don't be so quick to just automatically assume <clears throat> everything that's ever preached by some minister is always right. Anybody could be wrong. So the serpent was in trouble because he listened to himself. Eve was in trouble because she listened to the serpent. Adam was in trouble because he listened to Eve. My sheep will know my voice. So that begs the question, how can, I, how can I get to know God's voice? I want to tell you that I started this evening um, um, talking about intimacy with God. If I were, knowing what I know now, and I was a newborn Christian, here's the advice I would give myself. I would spend the first year of my Christian walk reading the book of John. I would read the Gospel of John, and when I got done reading it through the first time, I'd read it the second time. And I'd read it the third time, and I'd read it the fourth time, and I'd read it the fifth time. And I'd keep reading for at least a year the Gospel of John. It's real simple why. He's the only place, he's the only man in Scripture I find in the New Testament that said that this was a disciple whom Jesus loved. Now we know he loves everybody, so what made John differently? It wasn't that Jesus loved John more, it's that John knew it more. Does that make sense? John knew it more. So you, if you want to go to learn to play quarterback in the NFL, don't go to the Johnny Manziel School of Quarterbacking. Okay? Don't. It's not worth the $11 he charges you. All right? It's not. If you have the choice between Johnny Manziel or Tom Brady, take Tom. Whether you like him as a person or not, it's irrelevant. He knows how to quarterback in the NFL better than anybody or at least as good as anybody. John knew better what it was like to be loved by God than anybody else. Better than anybody else. So why not go to him? Amen? And I, I told you the funny story. They're, they're, it's near the end of ministry time together. They've been together for just a hair over three years. They're at what we call the Last Supper Jesus had just pronounced and said, one of you will betray me. And they said, who? Who? Who, Lord? Is it me? Is it me? None of them guessed. And he went on to say, in fact, the person who's going to betray me is so close, we're dipping our same tortilla chip in the same salsa. Well, no, it was bread and wine, but you get the message. It's like, the dude's right next to me. He's that close. He's at this end of the table. And Jesus is then silent. And Peter leans over to John and says, ask him who it is. I love that. I remember a time being afraid of my dad, and yet you wanted a favor out of him. Go ask dad if we're not grounded anymore. No, you ask him. No, you ask him. I asked last time. Anybody else can relate to that? <laughs> so here's Peter, who obviously had a great relationship with Jesus, but even he knew who to turn to. Let me encourage you folks. Even if you need a restart, I don't, it doesn't matter whether you've served God for a year, a week, or 20 years.
let me encourage you, you can't go wrong. Get in the book of John and read it and then read it and then read it again. And it's the most intimate of all the books, the Gospels. What does reading do for you? I like to look at it this way. The Bible is the word of God, but you know what it does? It, it, it tunes your radio. Now, we don't, we don't tune radios anymore. Is there even radios in the cars? We got search buttons now, don't we? Okay. But you have to be more than a few years older. Jeff, you'll know what I'm talking about. It used to be, yeah, you'd have to turn it, and then you'd have to, you know, and, it, and just the slightest turn, and all you hear is static, but then you turn it a little bit this way, and now you hear the music. But then if you drive 15 miles, now it's all staticky again, and you've got to tune it again to get it, I mean, I'm talking about it, just, just right, Okay. I know we don't have to do that now. You just press a button and it finds it for you. But you used to have to tune it. Reading the word of God tunes your spiritual hearing. You begin to get the nature and the character of God. You begin to develop the ability to hear his voice. But you first develop the ability to hear his voice by canceling out the others. What do you want to do when there's a whole bunch of people talking but you just want to hear, like if everybody's talking and I want to hear what Shane's saying, what do I do? Shh, 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 shh. I want to hear Shane. Reading the word of God helps me shush out the other voices. No, 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 that's not God because that contradicts this. I mean, no, I'm trying to say it. And, and you, you keep reading this. It, it's easier now to, okay, I know what that, that's me. That's me talking there. That's, that's me. Recognize that you, you, you always have a voice that's your voice, but you can't trust that voice. There is a way which seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but you can't always trust it. I want a voice I can trust 100% of the time. I, wa I was driving to see somebody and and I was praying about them, and I, I felt like God gave me a word for them. But it was dramatic. And, and I recognized in that moment that, that, you know, I had an opinion about this whole matter too. And, I, you know, I was crying as I drove. I said, God, listen, I, I want what you just said to be so true, but I want to make sure that's not me. I don't want to ever offer hope to somebody and find out it's just all made up. It was just me. I don't want to look at somebody and say, God says you will live and not die and have them cough out later six hours and they're gone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> kind of ruins the batting average. You want to know. You, you have to recognize that you will always have those other voices. There's nothing wrong with that. You're an opinion. You have an opinion. You have a person. You have a mind. You have a will. You have emotions. And those are all involved, and, and they will always be involved. But you have to learn to be able to differentiate between your voice and God. And what, what reading the Bible over and over does is it, it will bless you to read it, and, and, and it is spirit and it is life, but, but even more than that, it will help you to tune your radio. That's what God sounds like, not the King James, but the heart, the, 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 the soul of the person. You get that from reading it. You, get, you come to know them. You know what I'm talking about? I've had several people tell me they, they read my book and they said, you know one of the things I liked about it is it literally felt like you were sitting right in front of me talking to me. And that's what I wanted. Okay? I didn't want it to be seen. I, I wanted them to feel like I cared because I do care. And, 
And, and um, when, when you read the Bible, you begin to take on and understand the nature of the person that's being written about. You begin to tune your radio. Years ago in, in Georgia, I, dropped a, I was driving a tour bus, and I dropped this, this college team off at like 1 o'clock in the morning. And now I've got a two-and-a-half-hour drive back to the bus station, and it's out in the middle of nowhere, okay? It's literally out. You leave Cleveland, Georgia, heading to Cleveland, Tennessee, and you've got to cut through near Cherokee, North Carolina, and across. But you're out in the middle of nowhere for long spats of time. And I was struggling to stay awake. So I, I, I turned the radio up real loud, and there was no station, you know? And so I put it on search, you know? So it would slowly go through the dial, and when it would, I didn't care if I was going to hear some preacher or some banjo, okay, or Lawrence Welk repeat, I don't care. I just wanted noise in the bus to help me stay awake. And so I hit search, and you know, it, it went, I could see the dial, the numbers spinning, and never heard any sound. So I thought, well, it'll, it'll, eventually it's going to find the station. I turned the volume up real high. And like 45 minutes later, <laughs> it grabbed a hold of a station out of nowhere. I ruined those pants, okay? <laughs> All of a sudden, it's just blasting, okay? The radio. <laughs> oh, no. I wanted to clarify. The radio was blasting, okay? And, um, oh my gosh. Are you able to edit that part out, JJ? Uh. <laughs> There's videos that I like to watch on YouTube, and I'm, 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 a, I'm a softie for it. They've got some advances in medical care where they can take people who have never heard a sound before in their life and they can help them to hear now. And there are videos on YouTube where people, you're watching when they get to hear sound for the first time in their life. And I'll, I'll never, for, I, I love watching that. I love the joy, the absolute joy on people's face. One of them was a little baby. He was maybe a year and a half old. And they had implanted whatever they had to implant. And he's in a fussy mood, you know. He's just, he's just fussing. And he's just, and they're getting ready to turn it on. And he doesn't want to be held. He doesn't want this and that. And so finally the technician just turns it on. And his mom goes, honey? He stops. And the look on his face. And his mom goes, honey, I love you. And his tears just well up in his eyes. And he's staring at her. And I want to tell you, in the spirit, it can be that kind of a situation. But it's, it's worth fighting for. It's not going to happen in a moment. You got to, you got to, you have, if, if you're a, a, not a believer or if you're a, a young believer or a believer doesn't yet, hasn't developed the ability to hear God's voice, you've got you to gotta push for it. You've got you to gotta work at it because you, you're, you're, you, you have lived your life to this point without hearing that, without using that part of your body. I remember one time I fell asleep. I'd come in and it was just one of those days that it just, just wore me out. And I went to bed early. And I, I laid down in bed, and I went like this. I put my hands behind my head, and I laid in bed like this. And almost instantly fell asleep with my heads, hands over my head laying in bed. And I woke up like four hours later, and I could not feel my arms. It scared the bejeebers out of me. All the blood had drained out of my arms. And I remember I sat up and they went <laughs> and they felt like somebody else's arms. I felt nothing. And they had to get the blood flowing into them again and get movement and feeling. I'm going to tell you, and 
That's the reason we're born again is there's part of us that was dead. The spirit, man, part of you was dead. And, and, and when you're born again, you have the ability to hear and to see spiritually. But just like a baby, you have to develop that. They say when a baby's born, it sees shadows. And then, it, you know, over the use of that, they, they can begin to, 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 to see. As a, as, a, as a believer, it takes a while to get that ability to hear the voice of God. And you will always have to be quiet to get it. Okay? I've never had God yell at me one time. He himself said, be still. And know that I'm God. The prophet found that God wasn't in the, the storm, and he wasn't in the fire, wasn't in the wind, he was in the stillness. And so that, that I learned from reading his word that if I wanted to hear his voice, it, it's not initially, it's not going to be in the hustle bustle, you know, walk, talk with me while we're walking, God. Now, it'll get to that point, he's okay with that, but at first, Man, you, gotta, you read the word, and it helps you to develop the ability to hear his voice. Faith comes by hearing. How hard would it be to believe God if God walked in here, Mike, and said, you pray for Floyd right now and want to heal him? That'd be easy, man. Faith would come the moment you heard God say that to you. All right, so how do I get hearing? Hearing comes by the word of God. So by reading the Bible, I get it. I've been there. I understand for a good season of my life, reading the Bible, the only thing I got out of it, or most of what I got out of it, was the check mark that said, now I can go to bed and not feel guilty for not having read my Bible today. But doing that and being diligent to do that and do that, I noticed something else was happening. I was developing spiritual hearing. I was beginning to understand the person of the Bible. I was beginning to see how he speaks. I'm not talking about sentence structure. I saw his compassion, his heart. I see how he reacts in situations. And pretty soon then, I began to, there, was a, there was a hearing that came. It was like, you know, wow. I didn't know that a moment ago. God tells me to give this stranger $20. I can guarantee you that ain't me speaking. Come on now. Amen? I want to keep my 20 bucks. That ain't the devil talking. Because it's more blessed to give than to receive. The devil don't want me blessed. So, you know what, that, that had to have been God. <coughs> that had to have been God. All of a sudden, I have the urge to pray for somebody. Well, that ain't me. I don't want to go over to a stranger and pray for them. Are you with me? <clears throat> I'm shutting out the other voices. That, that's not me, because I don't want to, this is Walmart, man, this is. I don't want to go over and pray for that person. Is it the devil? Now, you seriously think the devil's going to tell me to pray for somebody? Probably not. Well, now, who's left? I'm going to go ahead and pray for that person. Let's just see what happens. Uh, years and years and years ago, when our oldest son was, 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 a, was a child, we were at Disney World. In fact, we were at Epcot Center, and they have traveling entertainers that go around and do things, okay? And they had the, a group from France that went and put together goofy little side-of-the-road plays, okay? And they, but they got people from the crowd involved. And they, they got this one guy to come up, and they put this stupid wig on him, you know, and a goofy dunce hat on him, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and the actor looked at him and said, you feel real stupid now, don't you? And he goes, yep. 
And he said something that was so life-giving to me. He said, don't worry about it. You'll never see these people again in your life. <laughs> I thought, you know, that's true. A moment ago, I, I was thinking, oh, I hope they don't pick me. I hope they don't pick me. You know what it's like. But the actor said, you'll never see these people again the rest of your life. And I have used that on myself so many times. I'm somewhere, and God puts, tells, puts on my heart to go pray for somebody, say something to somebody. My first personal reaction, it's like, what do I care? I'll probably never see them again the rest of my life. So I'll just do it. Get into your Bible. Read the book of John and read it. There's so much intimacy between Jesus and the disciples. There's so much intimacy between Jesus and the Father. And you, you will find yourself developing the ability to hear God's voice. You ever noticed something? If you wanted to describe another person to somebody that they had never met, you, you could maybe do that. If somebody was coming here tonight that had never been to this church before and I wanted them to say hello to Tracy and to meet Tracy, I could describe Tracy to them. I could physically describe Tracy to this person. And I could describe her well enough that this person could walk into this room, look around the room and say, you know, that's probably Tracy. Are, are you Tracy? Pastor described a person and, and you fit that description. How many know what I'm saying? You know one thing I can't describe is a voice. If the person who showed up on Wednesday night couldn't see and they had to rely on simply the voice, I could not tell them how to differentiate one of you from another. I mean, what I'm saying. And yet, once you know a person, you never forget their voice. You know them. Jeff can call me up on the phone. I don't need to see Jeff. I know it's Jeff. I know his voice. I don't need to see him. I know his voice. It's him. Tracy calls him. I know it's Tracy. Here's why that's so important. The only way you get to know a person's voice is to get to know the person. I had a guy that I hadn't talked to in 20 some years. And he came a he came across my mind, and I hunted up, he had his own business, and uh, he was still working at that business, and I hunted up his phone number, picked up the phone, understand, we haven't talked to anybody, each other in 20 plus years, picked up the phone, secretary answered, I said, could I speak to so-and-so? He answers, and he, he works in an optometry shop where they make glasses, all right? And here's exactly how I said it. I was going to aggravate him like he had messed up my glasses, okay, and just aggravate him for a minute. So he answers the phone. I go, my glasses don't fit. He said, excuse me? I said, my glasses, they don't fit. And he goes, 
Is this Mike Rice? I said, you have got to be kidding me. He said, dude, where have you been? I said, wait a minute. How did you know that was me? He said, oh, man, come on. I thought, I thought that was, I was trying to think of a, but he knew. Listen, I want you to know something. Please get this in your heart as we close. Get this in your heart. Your Heavenly Father loves you. He loves you. If you're a dad or a mom, you love your kids. You want to talk to them. You want to hear from them. He has built in us the ability to communicate with Him. Look at all the times in Scripture where the Bible says, and God said. Okay? God said, God said, God said, God said, God said. From beginning to end, God said. And if him saying it wasn't enough, how many times he sent an angel to tell somebody something? Okay? And if that's not enough, the heavens declare his glory. He's a God who loves to talk. We just got to tune our radio to the right station. You can't sit there with your radio off or your radio tuned to the wrong station and complain about there's nothing to listen to on the radio. You got to turn it on and then you got to tune it to the right station. And when you do, you will begin to hear the message. Here's how you tune your radio. Start reading your Bible. That's tuning the dial. I suggest you go into the book of John and spend a year there. Just read it. That will tune the Bible. You're not going to go three or four months of consistently reading in the book of John without all of a sudden there's going to be another voice added to the chorus of voices in your head. The voices from the past, the voices of worry, the voices of yourself, the voices of your friend, the voices of your pastor. There will be another voice added to that and you will learn to differentiate that voice from every other. Amen? So that we can get to the place. Remember when you used to have to know how to start a car to start a car? Now you don't even put a key in. You just, you got the key somewhere and you just press a button and it starts. Remember when it got cold weather, it used to be, and cars used to each have their own little nuances about starting it? It can be, they can be an old car, a new car. I remember growing up, and, you know, there's, there's five of us rice boys, and, and we all got cars, and, and we're still living at home, and Dad's got a car. It's 15 degrees outside, and, hey, if you're going out, would you start my car? Would you get it warming up, okay? How do you start it? Put the floor, gas pedal to the floor, let it up, hold halfway down, turn it, Okay? Somebody else, can you start mine? Yeah, how do you start yours? Pump the gas three times, take your foot off the gas, turn it. Let me know what I'm talking about. Every car had its own unique. I'm talking to a mechanic over here. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. Every car had its own uniqueness about getting it started. Your Heavenly Father knows your uniqueness. He knows how to get you started. you got to give him something to work with. Get into your Bible and begin to read. And it's okay if you initially... Get nothing out of it except the peace that comes with having doing what you're supposed to do. The word of God promises you, you do that, you will develop spiritual hearing. When Jesus said, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear, that's how you develop that. By getting into your word and getting into your word and getting into your word, that gives you the ability to tune your radio to find the station he's broadcasting on. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful, again, for your goodness. So grateful for your mercy and grace. And, and Father, we, we just pray that, in fact, I declare, God, that your word will not return void. It will accomplish that which you have sent it to do. And I pray that in the heart of every individual listening tonight, God, whether they're here in person, or they've listened in the broadcast, or 
They will later listen to the broadcast. I pray that they know this truth. You love them and you want to talk to them. And I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.